Welcome to Season 2, Episode 9, Thoughts on the Bear. This episode is called Omelette, another episode I love. Spoilers for this episode and all the ones leading up to it. And, yeah, the writers have won the, the strike. Now, the, you know, fingers crossed that the actors will also be able to, to get their very reasonable demands met. And until then... The top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the SAG After Strikers. Please do so. And then there are some links to videos to help explain why this is such an important strike. So let's dive in. So, yeah, we open on a montage of Carm and Claire Intimate, which, you know, for the rest of the episode, like his, we're seeing his focus be pulled, which takes a talented camera operator and let's see yeah they they talk about the the family night i do really appreciate sydney's father trying to be supportive and you know sometimes succeeding he does pretty decently in this episode and we get a montage of Carmi being stressed. I appreciate that the, the the subtitles point out that at least one of the characters is braying. And yeah, Carmi is okay with mom showing up. He doesn't really have high expectations, but Sugar's expectation, you know, she still thinks that there's going to be a miracle and things will be great and yeah and yeah I, I quite like the thing with the painting with you know the the you know that that's not really my kind of thing food safety is not your thing. no the painting is not my thing I texted you don't risk you know respond if you don't want me to hang it up and yeah, so Carm did not, you know, sell things with Tony, the fridge guy, and the the you know I like at first like you know you you got to deal with Tony. Oh yeah, sure, I'll deal with Tony. Who the fuck's Tony? And the you know after they they go a little bit back and forth, you know Tony, Tony, the fridge guy, Tony, you know, and then like I think it's Sydney who comes in. So um, did you deal with Tom, the fridge guy? No. no. Tony's the first, you know, now Carmi feels completely confident, even though, like, ten seconds ago, he had no fucking clue who Tom, Tony was. And, yeah, uh, honestly, you know, uh, yeah, Carm learns that Sydney's mother died when she was four, and Sydney says, don't do the I'm sorry for your loss thing. You know, and, and then jokes, you know, so yeah, we don't have a great relationship, because she's dead, you know, that'll do it. 100%, I felt that, that, one, I've been there, like, 20 times, I, I get it, you're sad, I'm sad, we're all sad, you don't have to say it, we're gonna be okay, you know, if I, if I ask you, can we talk about it, you know, sure, dive in to the, to the condolences, but other than that, just, you know, yeah. It's, anyway, moving on, I just, I really appreciated that bit of writing, because as someone who's lived it 100%, Sydney's reaction is, is very, very realistic. And we get the excellent electric guitar riff again, the, ah, crap, I forget what it was, I'll, I'll have it momentarily, let's see, some one soundtrack. It is called Refused New Noise. And yeah, and then we learn, you know, the, the station is left-handed, even though everyone here is right-handed, you know, so it's not right. Why is that? And they put out Carmi, the, the you know, the installer is left-handed. You were asked, is it okay for it to be left-handed or should it be right-handed? And you did, you know... Just, yeah. And, yeah, those desserts look delicious. 
and it is legitimately funny that there's still, you know, it's still being referred to as, you know, Sydney's donut until Carmi fucked it up like the asshole he is, or so, something like that, you know. And yeah, we get a master class, uh, you know, with Oliver, Oliver Platt yet again as he relates this story about baseball. And I quite like when, you know, at one point he's just like, and so the thing got fucking fucked up like a bunch of fucks, you know. And at the end of the story, Carmi gets the, the, the moral completely wrong. You know, so we don't want to be the, the kid in the stands. No, you don't want to be the, the, you know, what's it called? Catcher? I don't fucking know baseball. Uh, you know, the, the, were you even listening? Just, yeah, that was really funny. And, you know, Carm tells him, so I, you know, I have a girlfriend now. From the bottom of my heart, and I say this with love, uh-oh. And, yeah, so the, the titular omelette which, you know, they the title does not always really refer to the episode itself, anything in the episode itself. But yeah, it's it's Sydney making it for sugar, and it does look amazing. And Carm misses a call from Claire, which I'm guessing there's going to be... I feel like there's more than just, oh, you know, in the moment he's he's too stressed to, to deal with that. And we also don't see him call Tony, so that's that could be a problem. And let's see. Right, and, and Marcus tries asking Sydney out on a date, and it doesn't quite go well. And then she's like, that would be weird. And he's like, it, it would be weird? No, no, I don't. I don't mean weird. It's you know the, yeah, and you can you can understand. You know they've spent time together. They've bonded. Yeah, you can understand him wanting to try to take it to the next level. <clears throat> and I really hugely appreciate. You know they're they're doing the thing where a guy tries to ask a girl out. It doesn't go well, but they don't make her out to look bad. Like we completely understand where she's coming from. She's just. She's way too stressed to think about shit like that right now. And, you know, it doesn't mean that she doesn't like him. And, yeah, quite like the, the entire mind reading, you know, where the, yeah, they talk about how they have to anticipate, you know, all the, all the different, you know, figure out what people want without them having to directly ask, can you do this? And even when Neil looks great in a suit, Richie's still going to call him Jagoff. And I, I really love the thing, you know, um, in fact, you got a screwdriver. And it's like, ah, do I look like I know? Do I, know, do I look like I know where the screwdriver is? You know, I'm front of the house now. Come on, I'm kidding, and he has a screwdriver in the suit, which, yeah, that's, I feel like that, that sums up Neil Fack in just a few words. Even in a suit, he has a screwdriver on him. Love the, the, not all of it is a long take, but a chunk of it is a long take, where Sydney and Carm talk as the, you know, trying to fix the table, which is, of course, you know, what did they say, 25 minutes before they have to start, so this is not a great time to have to deal with, yeah, and great montage of cooking and, let's see, yeah, I continue to really like Tina and Carm getting along after the rough start, and yeah, we, we end on Sydney saying let it rip and uh, smash cut from the you know from unlocking the door to the end credits so yeah another really great episode where you know this this was the second to last episode of this season and yeah there are still several problems you know 
Apparently, it's not an exact science with the the renew, you know, cross off thing. So Ibrahim has to take the 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 test, and they hope that the guy doesn't show up on that day, but only the day after, so that he'll be able to take the test in time. We did not see Carmi call Tony the fridge guy, so I'm guessing that'll be a thing in next episode. And let's see. Yeah, I I expect the finale, given that it will have the family, the the Berzato family, it's gonna be complete chaos, like episodes of the show tend to be, and I really look forward to seeing it. Um, I think, and I appreciate, you know, it, it's, I don't think it's going to be just like the same thing because the, the, that episode, that was like the, the episode with the family dinner, that was Carmi coming back to Chicago from, I want to say he started in New York. He'd been in New York for a while, going back to Chicago and his mom, uh, you know, yeah, the, the mother of the family, him and the the siblings were, you know, she was spending forever cooking for them, the, the seven fishes thing. Now it's going to be, you know, Carmi's the one who's responsible for the food, and there's going to be a lot of questions about, like, personal life. I can imagine there's probably going to be some drama with Claire, you know, yeah, they're going to ask questions that are going to make statements, you know, they were talking about, oh, you know, she used to not be very pretty, but now she's pretty, I can imagine someone will will say, at least you're pretty now, or something along those lines. Uh, let's see, and, yeah, and, you know, without Richie there, it'll also, that will also be different, and, let's see, yeah, and from, from looking, I can see Jamie Lee Curtis, and, uh, yeah, she's going to reappear as Donna Berzato, Chris Witaski as Pete. Um, let's see. Yeah, and Claire is, an, right, and Joel McHale is going to make an appearance as the NYC chef. Probably in flashback, as was the case the other couple of times. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, right. I also, it was kind of fun when, um, let's see. Chester was one of them. I honestly don't, I'm not sure the name of the other character, but, you know, they showed up and they were like, you know, Rich, you wouldn't let us in through the front. And, and Carmen's like, yeah, that's, that's good. You shouldn't be. And, you know, what was it? Par some parm for Carm, which, yeah. Yeah, um, don't really have anything else to say about this episode. So, next episode will be sometime next week. Maybe roughly a week from, uh, maybe six days, but I'm not making any promises. And, yeah, then it's just a matter of waiting for season three, which is, yeah, really, really stoked. Really excited to see what they come up with next. And, yeah, until then, even when you're wearing a suit, you should have a screwdriver on you.